This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. It has not been a particularly great year for heavyweight boxing. WBC and lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury has not fought at all, and his scheduled fight for October is against former MMA champion Francis Ngannou, a man who will be making his professional boxing debut. Meanwhile, former heavyweight champions Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz Jr. have not fought at all, and neither has anything scheduled. The two were ordered to have a final eliminator bout to determine Fury's new WBC mandatory, but they couldn't agree on terms. Wilder last fought a year ago when he stopped Robert Hellenius in round one, and it's been more than a year since Ruiz won a decision against Luis Ortiz. At least former champion Anthony Joshua has fought twice this year, winning a unanimous decision against Jermaine Franklin in April, and also stopping Robert Hellenius last month. And of course, unified IBF, WBA, WBO heavyweight champion Alexander Usyk has fought just once, when he stopped the WBA mandatory challenger Daniel Dubois last month. That was the first time the WBA enforced a mandatory since AJ defeated Povietkin more than five years ago. And the mere fact that Daniel Dubois was even considered a mandatory challenger was a bit of a head-scratcher. After all, Dubois had already been stopped by Joe Joyce back in November 2020 when both boxers were undefeated. Yet somehow Dubois got the opportunity to fight for the so-called vacant interim regular WBA belt in his very next fight. This led to Dubois getting the chance to face Trevor Bryant for the real regular WBA belt. And after Usyk beat Dubois, that was supposed to be the last we ever saw of that ridiculous trinket. That lasted five full days. And then like a phoenix, the WBA awarded the supposedly extinct belt to Mahmoud Char. All of this goes to show how hopelessly corrupt the alphabet organizations are with their pay-to-play ranking scheme. The fact that Daniel Dubois inexplicably got a mandatory shot before Joyce drives that point home. At the start of this year, the then undefeated juggernaut was viewed by some as the third best heavyweight in the world behind Fury and Usyk, and was almost universally recognized as a top five talent. Joyce was on quite the winning streak. After beating Dubois, he won consecutive bouts against Carlos Takam and Christian Hammer, and then he beat former champion Joseph Parker in a bout between the number one and number two WBO contenders, which awarded Joyce the WBO interim belt, and by extension Joyce had secured his status as the WBO mandatory challenger. But with Usyk holding three of the four major alphabet belts, the WBO was last in the rotation, meaning Joyce would not get his shot until after WBA mandatory Daniel Dubois and also IBF mandatory Philip Hergovich. So rather than follow the David Tua path, effectively sitting on a mandatory status while waiting for the dust to settle, fighting a no-hoper here and there that in no way prepares one for a championship bout, Joyce wanted to keep busy, and he wanted to do so against solid competition in order to stay sharp for when he ultimately got the call. That is when Joyce looked in the direction of the dangerous but unproven Big Bang Zhang. Despite winning a silver medal in the 2008 Olympics, Zhang didn't earn a medal four years later in 2012 when he was beaten by Anthony Joshua. Zhang hadn't turned pro until 2014 at age 31. Before having a meaningful fight, Zhang had somewhat of a setback in 2021 against Jerry Forrest. After starting the fight strong and dropping Forrest several times, a lethargic-looking Zhang allowed Forrest to battle his way back. Zhang was deducted a point for excessive holding, and the 10-round fight was ultimately ruled a majority draw. After the fight, it was revealed that Zhang was suffering from low-level renal failure which caused extreme dehydration. Regardless, it did not appear that Zhang would ever become a serious player at his advanced age, having done nothing of note during his professional career. 18 months and a couple of soft-touch knockout victories later, Big Bang Zhang found himself in a very fortunate situation. The IBF had been looking to hold a title eliminator, where Hergovich eagerly accepted the invitation, but he had trouble finding an opponent. 
Luis Ortiz, Joseph Parker, Andy Ruiz Jr., and Murat Gassi have all turned down invitations. So it was Zhang, then ranked number 13 by the IBF, who finally stepped in so that the IBF could actually sanction their mandatory eliminator. Both boxers were undefeated going into that one, and it wound up being a very entertaining and competitive scrap. In the opening round, Zhang dropped Hergovic with a loopy cuffing right hand out of his southpaw stance. The action evolved into a tactical slugfest. Some rounds were extremely close without much separating the two, but many of the rounds were easy to score. Some of them clear rounds for Hergovic, and some of them clear rounds for Zhang. This one had a lot of mini shifts in momentum along the way, and it was a very entertaining and competitive encounter. At the end of 12 rounds, Hergovic was awarded a unanimous decision victory, but there were a lot of people who believed Zhang deserved to win. This was the first official loss suffered by Zhang, and Hergovic earned the IBF mandatory spot, where he still sits today more than 13 months later. Circling back to Joe Joyce and his desire to stay active rather than sit on his mandatory like Tua before him, Zhang seemed like a solid choice of opponent. He was no tomato can. That much was made abundantly clear after his performance against Hergovic. But Zhang was an older boxer, mostly untested in the professional ranks Hergovic aside. And his one known glaring weakness was the fact that he had at times exhibited stamina issues. Sure, he was heavy-handed and could punch, but that, in theory at least, played to Joe's strengths. Joyce was known for having a supposedly granite chin with unlimited stamina. Joyce was methodical and not especially fast, but an old unproven puncher seemed a perfect fight to stay busy up against quality opposition. And as an added bonus, it would give Joyce a chance to one-up Hergovic. In theory, it was a great approach, but in reality, it quickly turned into a nightmare as Big Bang Zhang just couldn't miss the mark with that snappy left hand. The ease at which Zhang was tagging Joyce was bad enough when he had two good eyes, but as the fight progressed, Zhang inflicted a great deal of damage on Joyce's eye, which only made matters worse. Even when Zhang slowed down and became more selective, he was still drilling the mark with authority. And Joyce had no clue how to contend with the sneaky incoming bombs. Halfway through round six, the ringside physician didn't like what he saw, and the referee waved it off. It was the heavyweight upset of the year which really shook up the division. Then with the rematch this past weekend, both boxers came in a good deal heavier this time, and Zhang proved it was no fluke the first time around. After measuring things out in round one and gauging any shift in tactics from the juggernaut, Big Bang Zhang opened up nicely in round two, where an uncertain Joyce already looked deflated. Near the end of the following round, Zhang ended matters with a clubbing right hook that smashed Joyce. Right now, Big Bang Zhang at the age of 40 has single-handedly kept the heavyweight division interesting, first scoring the heavyweight upset of the year, and following it up with the heavyweight knockout of the year. Unfortunately, top heavyweights just aren't facing each other, and indeed, some of them aren't facing anybody. Where oh where is Deontay Wilder? Where the hell is Andy Ruiz Jr.? At least Joshua is staying active as he rebounds from two psychologically devastating losses with a new trainer. Usyk only fights once a year since he's become a heavyweight, which isn't entirely his fault with COVID and the war, but it's disheartening that what will likely be his only fight this year was a mandatory defense against someone who had no business being a legit mandatory to begin with. And then Tyson Fury, the spectacle of him facing someone with zero boxing experience is even more disappointing. To their credit, Joyce and Zhang both stepped up to provide us with something to talk about in this lackluster heavyweight landscape. On that note, I am looking forward to the upcoming fight between Otto Valin and Marat Gassiev. But my goodness! None of these other top heavyweights are making interesting fights, and the shady alphabet bodies ain't helping matters one bit. As for Big Bang Zhang, at 40 years old, time is not on his side. With Usyk only fighting once a year, the IBF mandatory theoretically up next, 
heavyweights generally not fighting much at all, and the ever-looming prospect of an undisputed showdown between Fury and Usyk, which may include a rematch. It could be two or more years before Zhang actually lands a title fight, if he ever does at all. He is now in the exact same situation Joyce and Tua were before him, and he needs to make a choice. Either continue aging and sitting on the mandatory spot fighting soft touches every now and again, or challenge himself to stay sharp in hopes that betting on himself will pay off. Personally, I think Zhang needs to bet on himself, look to earn as much as possible, and hope he can get a chance at glory before he gets too old. A fight against any of the big three former heavyweight champions would be a most welcome proposition. A fight against Andy Ruiz Jr. or Anthony Joshua, or the one I'd be most interested in seeing, the Bronze Bomber vs. Big Bang Zhang. A nuclear right hand in Wilder, a nuclear left with Zhang, that would be guaranteed fireworks. But the problem is, I don't know if Ruiz, AJ, or Wilder would want to risk fighting Zhang without a title on the line, because they potentially have other big fight opportunities. Then of course, Zhang called out Tyson Fury, and with his scheduled event coming up next month, I suppose it's a possibility. And then you have Usyk who right now holds the WBO belt for which Zhang is the mandatory. If Usyk keeps winning and wants to keep the WBO belt, then sooner or later that fight might happen. Even a rematch against Hergovic would be a most welcome showdown. But Hergovic is another mandatory in waiting, and his mandatory shot should theoretically come before Zhang's. So the motivation, again, simply might not be there. And it's an unfortunate situation where we effectively had this unknown powerhouse in his late 30s who finally breaks through during a day and age where top heavyweights are fighting less than ever. And now that Zhang is 40, the clock is ticking. But whatever happens next, I'm looking forward to watching more of Big Bang Zhang. Congratulations on the sensational victory, and best of luck to Zhang and Joyce moving forward. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.